go live. Are you going live? Yeah, it says trying to reconnect due to poor wireless connection. Hello, everybody. This is Angelique from the Superwomen Babes Club and welcome on Valentine's Day. I'm in Hong Kong and Maxine is in the UK. And today we're going to do part two of the six part series for fuck's sake, why am I single? And uh, today um, we are going to explore the theme of completions or moving on. And um, yesterday, Maxine and I spoke about um, having a vision uh, to, to actually really um, create this uh, amazing relationship. And so today we're going to look at completions and Maxine will take us through um, how they work in the calling into one process with completions. By the way, the, um, the internet connection is a bit, bit uh, weak, so maybe it's good for me to stop the video. It's very weak for the Facebook Live, so I'm gonna stop my video, if, if that's okay. okay. Yep, okay. okay, so is it just me that's live? Am I on Facebook? Yes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Hi. The day of love. Yeah. Every day is a day of love, really. Not just Valentine's Day. Every day, exactly. So Maxine, um, how do we actually even know that we have not moved on? Okay, so how do we know? Generally, we're feeling a lot of pain, Angelique. Usually we're, you know, we're in the, we're in the past. We're living in the past. We're thinking about the past. Um, we find we are unable to um, meet people. Um, to, to start dating and really we find that we're living very incongruently to what we would love to have in our lives so you know in other words you know we have this desire to have love and to create love and to be in love and to you know to have a partner but we're unable really to take the steps forward in in creating that and it might be that you are going on lots of dates uh, but you're meeting the wrong people or you're meeting people and you just don't feel any connection. And, you know, it's these type of things that actually prevent people from really opening themselves up to love. Um, and there's a couple of areas where we can see that we need to complete on. Um, so, for instance, uh, you might have resentments uh, in old relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, resentments about the way the relationship ended you may have felt that um, you know someone didn't apologize to you or you were treated badly and therefore your persistent thinking about that relationship reminds you of what happened and the pain around the relationship and so you don't believe that you can create a relationship of love or that you don't believe that there are nice men out there or nice women for, for the, any men that are listening today um, and you may have a lot of toxic ties in your relationships. So one of the definitions for toxic ties um, or where you can understand whether you're in a relationship that has a toxic tie is if energetically the relationship drains you, if it leaves you feeling uh, not good about yourself and where you're persistently in a state of, um, you know, emotional, emotional turmoil uh, around the relationship. Um, there's a lot of old agreements. People have old agreements, and also there's what we call sacred wounds, where you know that's the that's the type of thing that perhaps has happened in childhood, um, something that's deeply wounding to us, and where we keep attracting and recreating relationships um, around that wound in order for, order for us to have the learning and the healing um, in in terms of relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you've given a lot of examples of people, you know, mm. they can actually assess whether or not they have moved on themselves. Uh, what if they really rationally believe that they don't want a relationship? Because that's what I see as well. So people don't even want a relationship and then they justify it with, I'm too busy with my career. Um, I'm not the relationship type. I want my freedom. Um, how do people know that it's not coming from this 
you know, what I would call avoidance strategy and not going deep to actually really explore um, what they're resisting? Or how do we know that it's actually really a choice that they're making and that they, they actually mm. moved on? Yeah, that, that's a really good question because I do think there are times in our lives where we um, perhaps don't necessarily want to focus on having a relationship or creating a relationship. And that's healthy. You know, we, we, we don't always have to be in relationship. And particularly for people who perhaps have always been in relationship and they're making that conscious choice not to have a relationship because part of their pattern is to is to never be alone, to never get to know themselves, um, to never, um, you know, they use relationships in order to prop themselves up and to feel safe in the world. So yeah. I think there's the healthy choice around not having a relationship. Um, and perhaps, you, you know, you might decide if you are busy setting up a new business or if you're particularly, um, you know, trying to create certain things in your career, you may sort of decide you know what a relationship isn't important to me right now and that could be a very healthy conscious thing where it's not about avoiding um the pain of going into a relationship and you know i remember a long long time ago when i attended um life mastery good you know sort of goodness 17 years ago um tony robbins says that if you and i might not get the wording exactly right here but he sort of says um, if you're not in a relationship, it's because of the fact that you have issues within within you that you haven't actually healed. You, that's what he said. He said you associate more pain to having a relationship um, and therefore you use that to avoid the relationship, actually creating the relationship. And I think that that happens when people have got the, in, you know, when they haven't completed on the path. So if I give you an example, I know um particularly in myself when i first came out of um my second marriage i was definitely in so much pain around the breakup and um the mistrust in the relationships because my ex-husband had an affair um and so i associated a lot of pain to well if i'm going to be in a relationship can i trust someone again yeah. And that in itself is a, is is a core wound that was getting sort of triggered in me that made me say, you know what, I'm actually better off being on my own and I'd rather be on my own. And so when you hear yourself saying things like that, and a lot of people sort of, you know, end up, you can listen to the language people are using around relationships. So they end up saying things like, well, there's no good men out there, um, or you can't trust men, or you can't trust women, or... Um, you know, when people get into that generalizations around the um, opposite sex, yeah. you generally at that moment can tell that they are being triggered by an incompleteness around a past relationship. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't even have to probably be relationship. It could also be things that have happened in their childhood, as you said, with primary caretakers, or it could even be something that has happened, you know, um, you know, maybe with siblings, you know, it could be, it could be a myriad um, number of things that could make them feel that relationships are, you know, either not good for them or actually just toxic, um, uh, uh, you know, in itself. Um, so a lot of projections are unfinished, what we would call um, in Jungian terminology, which is what I studied for a long time, unfinished business. And I think you're absolutely yes. right. The Jungians would say, you know, you have unfinished business when you have a complex around a certain topic and a topic could be relationship. It could be having a partner or it could be being single. And how do you uh, how do you recognize a complex? A complex mainly very often uh, triggers something in you and then you react in a very programmed way. So that could be, you know, with a lot of despair or with a lot of anger or with a lot of resistance or frustration. Very often people go into what, you know, Tony Robbins probably would, would call the crazy eights. Um, you know, so yes, yeah. very um, either they, they go to despair or they go to anger. Um, and then, and, you know, it's all about meeting their needs in a very unconstructive or unresourceful way. So, uh, yeah. So 
So what if we have... Well, yeah, just, just to add there, just to add there, you know, in a very simple way, you can always tell if you're incomplete around a relationship is if you have energy, in ter if energy is going into that relationship. So, you know, when you've got a completion around something, you might hear a story about that person and you just don't have any energy going there. It's, you, you know, energetically, you are feeling whole and so you're feeling complete. Yeah, yeah. So that could be, for instance, um, you know, because we now have amazing Facebook Live, mem Facebook memories, and I've seen yes. Facebook memories of, you know, Valentine's days of, you know, ex-partners. Like one was, mm -hmm. um, one was with a partner that I organized a seminar with. Another one was with somebody, you know, one of them took me to Istanbul. Another one, you know, took me, basically created a whole amazing day for me in London. You know, you have all these memories. Yeah. Come up. And I was checking within myself, yeah. like, what do I feel about these men, you know? And actually, I was really yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really happy to yeah. I was actually really and, loving loving towards but, them. Yeah. I know when I it was really funny, when I broke up with um with my ex husband, that Adele song was on the radio. Um the one that says um I can't remember the words now, but the one the really painful I, I never oh, I can't think of the words. I'm terrible at remembering songs. But it was a big Adele song and I remember I used to get in the car and I'd hear it on the radio and I'd be in tears. I I mean, you know, I'd have to stop the car because I was crying so much. And now I always find it really interesting. Whenever I hear that song, I just, you know, I love the song, but I just don't feel what I felt previously. So it's a really good, you know, music is often something that triggers people into um, emotions because the fact that, you know, music reminds us of certain times or situations. Um, so, yeah, I know I'm healed. <laughs> yeah amazing so how how do people complete what what would be the type of work that people need to do before they know they're complete what what would it entail in the calling in the one that process well in, in calling in the one we have specific exercises and so we would we spend actually a week looking at completion um so this is really the part of clearing the inner obstacles um so we look at well what is incomplete about the past and People tend to, you know, completions um, is a lot about losses. So what have we, you know, what have you, what do you feel you've lost um, in a relationship? Um, and it's quite interesting because what we, we do in Calling the One, we really look to find empowered meaning. And so we look at losses from the past and we sort of say, well, what did you lose? But also what did you gain? Because with every loss, there is always a gain. And what keeps people trapped is they're focused on the loss rather than actually balancing it out and having a sense of um, equilib you know, neutrality around the, um, around the situation. And so we sort of want, you know, there's, there's a number of different exercises, but one of the exercises that people could actually do today if, they, you know, if they're experiencing a sense of um, incompleteness around something is to look at, the, look at the loss and sort of say, well, okay, what was the loss, but what was the gain? What did you learn from this experience? What did you have to, you know, what qualities within yourself did you have to draw out in order to, in order to overcome the situation? Um, what did you learn? What did you transform? Um, also, what did you create as a result of, of that? So, because usually most people will find um, if they look at it and if they choose to look at it from the perspective of, you know, I really you know, this is why we, we start with the vision. If I'm looking to create my vision, what learning can I take from this experience in order to grow from the experience? Um, and then the other thing we look at a lot as well is, um, obviously we look at beliefs, but that's more in tomorrow's session. But we look at what unconscious agreements, old agreements do you have um, around that you could have made in childhood, you could have made at any point in your life, that are preventing you from moving forward. And so, you know, just to give an example of something like this, um, one of the clients I was working with, a beautiful, lovely, lovely Indian lady, she grew up in India and um, she had went on to study. And, you know, at the time that she was growing up in India, it wasn't the done thing for females to go to university. And one of the things that her grandmother had said to her, you know, not intentionally, but it had had a big impact on her was her grandma, grandmother had mentioned that um, 
if she was to go to university, she would never ever be married because of the fact that she would have this education and she would be far um, superior to, to, to the men in her life, etc. And that, um, that, you know, marriage was out of, out of the, out of question for her now. Um, and so she reached to the age where she's in her very early 40s and she's never been married. And it was through doing the program and, you know, going through week two that she, she had even forgotten about this. It was something that was, you know, deeply in her unconscious that she had forgotten about. And then she realized while she was doing, doing the exercises, was, oh my goodness, you know, I've unconsciously set myself up with this agreement with my grandmother that I would, I would never marry because I went to university and I've become educated. I mean, how is that when you sort of see that? unconsciously the impact that has had on her life and how she has created um relationships set herself up into these relationships with men where they're always in awe of her and her abilities and she never ever dates men who are of the same um you know uh what's the word social something of the word but yeah social class and and so same standing as her so she's unconsciously perpetuating the agreement that she had with her grandmother yeah yeah so um i can imagine this is very deep work it's one week enough it's one <laughs> uh, well do you, do you know what you know calling in the, the one is not therapy it, no. you know and i have to be very clear with people about that we are really and we and you know so when we work with people we're really working with people who have the ability to be self-reflective who have the ability to look at things see where the um see what is going on and choose to find empowered meaning and you know that starts you know that starts with a discovery session where we we ask certain questions etc in order to ascertain the right sort of people that are you know okay for the program um but week two week two and week three um i mean we're doing this on a daily basis just talking about the steps week two and week three are very deep and because of the way we work, where we access emotions in the body, we provide the tools that allow people to have a transformational shift in, in, you know, in a very contained period of time, which is over the, the eight week process. Yeah. Yeah. And I know for myself, you know, sometimes if you do a short, very focused uh, area of work with people, with a group um, or with a very experienced facilitator, mm. You can go very deep and then you can still um, make a quantum leap. And then, you know, when, and then of course, when you then meet a new person or you start dating again, or you fall in love again, then another layer comes yeah. up. Then of course, because you've done the seven week process, you are, you are actually so much further. You're so much more aware of, of, of things. And then you're going to react in a different way. So you're, you're, you're going to be in a very different place. Uh, rather than um, you know uh, before you you started the, the seven week process I, I would assume yeah yeah absolutely and you know we are we are works in progress aren't we Angelique you know we are always evolving we're always learning new things and part of um, the calling in the one is you know you're learning a new way of relatedness to yourself so you begin to orientate yourself from a true sense of um, self as opposed to your full sense of self and obviously there's always going to be situations that will trigger the full sense of self and it's having the awareness to recognize ah that's what how I used to be used to relate and shifting your power into a new way of relating and so it's you know it, it is an eight-week process um, people have major transformation but after that, those eight weeks, it's not like, you know, it's, it goes back to the gym analogy. You don't just then stop going to the gym and expect to have this amazing body and for it to stay that way unless you're genetically blessed, you know. So it's about learning, going, getting your transformation, doing the shift, but then still applying and integrating what you've learned from the program in your everyday life. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know that a lot of people, you know, when they, you know, divorce processes, for instance, sometimes take two years or three years, dependent on yeah. the lawyers and the, the assets involved. Would you, what yeah. would you 
say in terms of, you know, the people that actually then go on dating while they're still in divorce procedure, how do people who get involved with these people know that these people are not doing the rebound thing or whether they are, yeah. that, well, how to, how do you assess whether your new dating partners actually, you know, um, ha has finished their business with this, this, this ex-partner or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, that's an interesting question because I definitely think, um, I think, I, I think I remember reading this somewhere a long time ago that, you know, the length of time it takes you to heal a relationship, um, I think it's like a, for, for a week for every year. No, not, what is it? I forgot, I can't remember what the statistics, but in my own experience, what, what I do know and what I've learned from working with people is that you know, the length of the relationship and the depth of the relationship will depend very much on part of that healing process and whether you're ready to be out there dating again. And so it's really interesting, you know, statistically men ten, tend to generally move on in relationships a lot quicker than women. Um, and there's lots of different thoughts around that about why that happens, uh, which is a whole another story. Mm -hmm. um, I think for, from the perspective, if you are looking to start dating and you are separated, I think it's a really healthy and it's really important that you complete on your marriage um, in terms of, um, that's not to say you can't date before your divorce because some divorces take a long time, um, particularly if there's conflict around the divorce, etc. cetera. Um, but I definitely think that you need to do the inner work around the completion of your of your marriage or, or your you know your divorce in order to allow yourself to be really truly open to to dating and dating from a healthy perspective as opposed to dating because you know you you need someone in your life or you, you're afraid of being on your own or you know you're feeling lonely so so there's there's a number of different reasons why people date there's a number of different reasons why it's important to clear the inner blocks and I think also the other thing, I mean, I've noticed it myself when I, I've dated, I've spent, you know, quite a lot, of, a lot of time in dating. And, you know, there is, a, there is a timing around when someone's really ready to embrace a new relationship. And I've dated men who've been sort of, you know, maybe separated for a couple of years, still going through their divorce. Um, and it's usually ended up that they're definitely not quite ready. And I, if I look back at myself and I sort of, you know, look at the type of relationships I had you know the first two years well, I didn't date anyone for the first two years after I got um well I was separated because I just wasn't in the emotional state to date someone um but when I did start dating I was definitely incomplete in myself and that incompleteness was bringing up you know the relationships were bringing up all sorts of issues and challenges which I found really really difficult to you know to emotionally deal with at the time so I think it's really important that you do the inner work and release all those obstacles, release all those blocks, release the barriers, release the resentment, the anger, the frustration, and let it all go before you, you know, you, you start having healthy dating. And particularly if you're looking to call in um, another life partner. But that's not to say that, let's say you are now in a relationship with a very conscious person, that when these things come up, that you have to say, you know, I need a break because I need to, like... No, 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 no. Things are going to come up. Relationship will bring, will bring things up. Yeah. The whole purpose of relationship to, to um, allow us to, you know, have that, that healing, to heal the un, un, disowned parts of ourselves, the projected parts of ourselves, but there are definitely, if you are really in, if you're really in the middle of your stuff, yeah, um, then you can, you can attract people that help you to heal that stuff as well. So that does happen, um, definitely happens. Yeah. Um, so it's not to say that you can't do it, but I personally think that, you know, when you do the inner work, you find that you have a shift on the outside of what you create and what you bring towards you so if you haven't done the inner work you will attract people to you that will help you do that inner work or will help trigger your need for the inner work does that make sense 
Oh God, don't I know it's true? <laughs> yeah, it is true. Guarantee. Yeah, yeah. I, we're both laughing about this, but it, when you're in it, it's just pretty painful and pretty heart wrenching as well. And you you tend to think that you're some you're some somehow flawed when you when these things come up over and over again. And even as relationship mm. experts or people who study this stuff, but I think actually the more that you are aware the more that you can take responsibility and own your part in, in, the, you know, in the way that you are triggered and the way that you are helping maybe even this other partner heal their stuff. And I think, um, you know, I think what is very important to know is that a lot of very advanced thinkers in terms of relationship dynamics, they will actively say relationships are not here to make us happy. Relationships more so in a very deep, mysterious way, help us to heal and to, and to mm. own ourselves and to be more of ourselves. But they're not definitely relationships are not there to make us happy. They're very much relationships are teachers, you know, the te they're tools to actually, you know, um, bring out the gold in us or bring out the darkness and help us transform it. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, and you know what, I think it's really interesting that we forget that there is a natural order in life, you know, that, you know, you've just got to look at the cycles of, you know, wind, autumn, winter, spring, summer, you know, there's cycles in relationships, and some relationships, and I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, your soulmate is not here to just, um, you know, it's the, the romantic illusion of soulmates is that a soulmate is just here to, to make you happy. Soulmates are people that are part of your soul journey. If, you, if anyone's read The Little Soul and the Sun by Neil Donald Walsh, you know, the, one cannot fe hear, feel forgiveness. One cannot express forgiveness if one doesn't have something to, someone to forgive. And, you know, I think that that is the key word that we need to focus on in week two is the forgiveness for other people forgiveness for ourselves for you know the mistakes the, the mistakes or the the parts in relationship where we too have um you know created these experiences that haven't ended in the way we want them to be and so it's you know it's an opportunity you know week two is really an opportunity to learn to forgive and to surrender to what is and to allow the natural cycle of things you know that have to pass and to die in our lives in order to embrace the new different the new things in our lives and that's that's really why it's so important to be able to look at the losses and say well look yes I've lost this but actually what I discovered in myself what I learned in myself how I grew in myself is you know i've 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 learned forgiveness or i've learned understanding or you know i remember thinking really clearly you know i loved my husband without a shadow of a doubt madly in love with him for the whole time i was with him in fact you know but what was really really interesting was after we broke up i remember thinking at one point wow you know like i'd i really felt an unconditional love for him because of the way he had behaved it was so shocking to me like so extreme that I never thought this person would behave in this way. I kind of reached a level of unconditional love for him that I probably didn't actually ha have experienced in the, in the marriage. Does that make, you know, it's, it's weird to think that you can reach that afterwards with someone. Um, but I did. Um, and I do think that, you know, relationships give us that opportunity to really, you know, remove the obstacles um, and the blocks to experience love and sometimes that's why they do fail because the fact that one or two in the party cannot go beyond um, themselves in order to experience a deeper level of unconditional love with someone and I think I do think that's why relationships break up yeah and and I think of course there should be healthy boundaries between you know unconditional love and love with boundaries if you know what I mean where you know, unconditional yeah. love can sometimes be a little bit mis misunderstood. I think unconditional love is where, you know, you can experience unconditional love, but still be incompatible or not compatible yeah. with the person and still wish them the best and want the best for them, but not totally. in yeah. 
school, but maybe, you know, come to agreements about, you know, caring about the kids or the finances or whatever. But I think yeah. definitely, yes, if we were not to experience certain dark moments in our lives, we would not be able to, 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 to um, experience some of, you know, some of the more nobler aspects of our soul, I would say. Mm, yeah, I, t absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, this is, this is why I love this topic so much. It's, it's such a deep topic, isn't it? You know, we can, you know, there's the superficial love and then there's, there's, you know, a depth of love that our souls know because, you know, ultimately our souls can never be hurt. Our souls don't experience pain. It's or loss. the ego that experiences the pain and the suffering. And in fact, our souls are whole and complete. And, you know, that is the place that we are, um, are going towards. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that you have to put up with people's bad behavior or that you allow people to be abusive towards you or treat you badly or, you know, um, are inconsistent with your values. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it's, you know, for me, um, when I look at sort of completions, I think it's also about, you know, taking your power back and standing in your own authority and completeness within yourself. Um, because when you are disempowered around a relationship or disempowered about the choice of relationship, then you are actually giving that power away to something outside of yourself. And you're not, not making whole choices that are in line with, alignment with your soul and, and who your soul is. Yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm so loving this this uh, conversation because it is so deep, uh, Maxine. And um, as we're going through this conversation, I'm learning so much about you and about myself. And I'm sure that you know our what the viewers are also learning a lot about the depth of you know relationships and what relationships mm. we embody in our collective con on consciousness or consciousness. And how we can actually step away from, you know, the, 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 the simplistic way that sometimes pop psychology or the media approaches relationships. You know, every relationship brings with it so many deep lessons that, you know, if we give up too easily on them, you know, um, thinking mm -hmm. it should all be easy and my soulmate is going to make me complete. And, you know, if we believe fall for that type of simplistic thinking, then we're going to definitely fail. But if we understand, you know, what we are, what we have signed up for when we came into this body and in this life and in this person, mm. and especially with the people that we, we that we have these deep intimate relationships with, then we're gonna have we're gonna at least be able to appreciate, you know, the richness of experiences that it brings us, whether it's whether we think it's good or bad, you know, it's going to it's going yeah. to us in some way or form, and we and. And doing this type of work just makes us appreciate it even more, uh, rather than yeah. being stuck in the what, I know. the abyss or the despair or the 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 basically the what is it the skepticism of of being um, uh, you know of uh, being very um, uh, what is it skeptical towards people who even believe in love. I think the most important thing is we always have to believe in love because love goes beyond anything that we can comprehend it contains mm. everything it's a very spiritual you know uh concept or reality and and that that is the one thing that will pull us through everything and and it's exactly mm. what you say you know it's it, it is it touches deeper aspects of ourselves and it has it goes beyond you know, reality, this, this dimensional reality, the third dimensional reality that we live in, you know, it has darkness and it has light. And the, the, the work that we do individually um, on our own darkness, you know, even if it's in relationship to this, this glorified, like, uh, fairy tale of, of soulmate love, you know, mm -hmm. it's still going to it's still going to affect others in a, in a very deep way because of the people that we are becoming because the but because of the way that we're going to le teach our children or our nieces and cousins or our clients or our business partners uh, because of how we relate to them in a different way. So I think I think uh, 
maybe this is the, the right, right way to end this, this, this discussion, even if people rightfully say, you know, I'm not a relationship material, the way that you love and the way that you look at love, you know, it, it tells so many stories about all your unconscious, um, you know, uh, uh, beliefs and, and um, identities. Mm -hmm. And, but also it will mark, it will have a, a, a strong effect on how you basically leave a, an imprint on the psyche of all the people that you touch. And that could be for good or for worse. And, you know, and as an, and, and as an optimist, I would always say, leave a positive impact, you know, be a force for good in every meeting. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? Even in, a, in an airport or in a train station, be, be a force. Yeah, you can, you can bring love to any moment. And I think that this is where, this is why, you know, when people are really skeptical about love and when they're really in their pain around their relationship experiences, they kind of forget that you can experience love at any point in any time, but it is something that you have to focus and you have to bring to the table, isn't it? It's, you know, you can, you know, you've, I'm sure you've been there where you're at a checkout and you see someone's got a badge and you say, you know, thanks Joe. Um, thanks for helping me today. Or, you know, have a nice day. And you just use someone's name in that moment. You know, that in its moment is bringing love to that person. And, yeah, it's not romantic love, but it's just that connection. It's like a real connection. And I think that that's what is so important in our lives today, particularly, you know, with social media, where people spend a lot of time on, you know, places like Facebook and other social platforms, um, not fully connecting to people and feeling disconnected from people, even though we've got a platform here where we can connect. And that's what, you know, Facebook Live, one of the things I love about Facebook Live is that it gives us the opportunity to really connect and be together. Um, but just bringing love to every situation, uh, whether you're, you know, walking down the street and sending out love vibes to people and just imagining that love's flowing out of you to other people that you meet, it can make a huge difference to um, the world that we live in and help to, you know, raise the vibration of the planet in, in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much on this Valentine's Day, Maxine, for a very rich and deep conversation. Um, I, I, we will end it right here so that we do we can still mm. upload this onto uh, YouTube. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to talk about belief systems. Um, yes, tomorrow we are on day three. We're going to talk about actually healing core wounds. Uh -huh. So that is around the belief systems. It's all about the false love identity and how we get tricked into our false love identity and um, why it's important that we understand um, what that false sense of self is. And yeah, that's what it's about. Core wounds. Big one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you everybody for watching the, re the rewind or, you know, the replay. And if you have any questions for Maxine, uh, do feel free to pop a comment on the Facebook live or uh, private message her or me. If you want one of the taster sessions or one of the discovery sessions to know how to work with her, she has a, a heavily reduced discounted rate to help raise money for nourished children. So 16 pounds for 30 minutes, 32 pounds for an hour. So do contact Maxine if you know anybody um, that would benefit from this. So thank you so much, Maxine. Looking forward to see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.